yo, yo, what's up guys, how's it going? It's your boy, the Origami Ninja, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fold this awesome paper flower. The first thing we're gonna be needing is six square sheets that measure six by six inches. Then we're gonna be needing some scissors, something to crease down your papers with, that's optional, you can just always do it with your fingers, a pen, some buttons, and we're only gonna be needing one, a ruler, some tape, and that's it. So if you guys have all this, then we're ready to rock and roll. Alright guys, so before we start this tutorial, I'd like to introduce to you guys a new game that we're going to be playing throughout my tutorials. The person to win this game will get their name shouted out on, on the next tutorial to come, so pay close attention to the rules of the game. Alright, so this game is called Find the Origami Ninja, and you're going to have to find this logo of the Origami Ninja in black and gray three times throughout this video. So it's not going to be the one that you see here at the top left that's in color, it's going to be the black and gray version of the logo. So I'm going to hide it throughout the video, it's going to be hidden three times throughout this whole video, and the first person to write down all the times of exactly when it appeared in the video on a comment down below will get their username from YouTube shouted out on my next video. So pay close attention guys, I'm going to try to make it as difficult as possible and the logo will only appear for a second or two, so pay close attention. Alright guys, so now that we got everything that we need to start the project, let's go ahead and clear the table. Alright, so once you clear the table, let's go ahead and separate these six square sheets of paper in three groups of two. And if you chose two colors for your flower, then you want to make sure to have one of every color inside the set. So I'm using yellow and white, so I have a yellow and white in every set. Once you got those separated, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to grab one of these. And for the first step, what you're going to want to do is fold this bottom right corner towards the top left corner. So once you got them nicely aligned, let's go ahead and crease it down nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and use this little guy right here. This is my origami tool. I use it to crease down every crease that I do. I love it. You could use a pen or you could use your fingers or you could use anything else that works. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate the piece of paper in this direction and fold the bottom right corner towards the top left corner. When you got those nicely aligned, let's go ahead and crease it down. Now we're going to rotate the paper towards the right and fold this bottom right corner towards this top left corner. And when I bring this corner upwards, I'm going to go ahead and align the bottom section first. Since there's a lot of layers of paper, I'm going to get this section aligned first, and then I'll go ahead and bring the bottom right corner towards the top left. Once you got them nicely aligned, let's go ahead and crease it down really good. And now, if yours looks like this, then that means you're doing an excellent job. Let's move on to the next step. So now I want you to fold this corner towards this left edge right here. And when you do so, you want to make sure to fold this edge towards this edge and make sure they align nicely. But first, you want since there's so many layers of paper, you want to make sure to kind of first create a crease towards this bottom section and get that section aligned first, just like that, just like I did. Once you got that nicely creased and aligned, let's go ahead and align the top section. And once you got those nicely aligned, let's go ahead and crease it down really, really good. Uh, there's a lot of layers of paper in this section because we've, we've created quite a bit of folds. So if you don't crease it down good, then it, it's, you're, it's just going to be very difficult to create the, the next steps that are going to be coming up. So make sure to crease it really, really good. All right, so once you crease it down really good, this is what yours should look like. So if yours looks like this, that means you're doing an excellent job. So now what I want you guys to do is repeat the same steps we did here, but to the following sheets of paper. So let's go ahead and do that. And since we're gonna be repeating the same steps that we just did to that square sheet of paper, I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward it. If you need to rewatch the steps all over again, just make sure to rewind the video until the next step. All right, so once you've done that to all your pieces of paper, then we're gonna get go ahead and move on to the next step. What we're gonna be needing now is a ruler and a pen. 
So let's go ahead and grab those. All right, so once you got those two things, let's go ahead and grab one of these from our first set. And you're gonna notice that from this section to this section, it's gonna measure three inches. So let me go ahead and show you guys. And yours should measure three inches as well. And if it doesn't, then you've obviously done something wrong and you should probably rewind the video and rewatch it and make sure that you're doing the right steps. All right, so it should measure three inches from there to there. So let's go ahead and let's measure it once again, just to double check and make sure that it's correct. All right, so once you've measured that, let's go ahead and let's measure this bottom section from here to here and measure it out to three inches. But now what we wanna do is we wanna mark, create a little, little tiny dot right here where it says three inches. So let's go, go ahead and grab our pen, create a little dot, and then we wanna draw a line from this dot to this corner. So let's go ahead and do that. So once you've done that and yours looks like this, then that means you're doing an excellent job. So now let's repeat the same steps to this one as well. And since we already know that it measures three inches from here to there, we're gonna go ahead and work on this bottom section and then draw, draw a line from here to there. So let's go ahead and repeat the same steps we did to the other one, but to this one. So you wanna make sure that your tip is right there and that you draw a dot right there where it says three inches. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and draw a line from that dot to, to the corner on the top section. So from here to here, let's draw a line. All right, guys, so once you've done that, let's go ahead and repeat the same steps that we did here, but to the second step. But what we're gonna wanna do now is measure it at two inches and a half. So you wanna make sure that yours measures up to this point right here. Not three, but two inches and a half. So we have to make these flowers a little shorter than the first set. So what you wanna do first is you wanna measure from this bottom section, right from this corner to here, two inches and a half. So make sure that the tip is at two inches and a half, just like you see here. And then right at the beginning of the ruler, you want to go ahead and mark your line. So it should be two inches and a half. So if yours looks like this, then you're doing a great job. And now let's move on to the next section. So now we're going to measure from here to here. And same thing, we want to make sure to measure two inches and a half. So let's go ahead and do that. Right where it says two inches, mark your line. And then create a line from here to here. All right, so once you've drawn your line, guys, this is what yours should look like. So let's go ahead and repeat the same steps that we did here to this one. All right, guys, so just remember that we're marking this one as well at two inches and a half. So make sure to take your time and make sure to get your measurements right. All right, so once you got it measured, go ahead and mark it at two inches and a half. And now let's go ahead and rotate this sheet of paper and repeat the same steps to this side. So once you've drawn your dots at two inches and a half on each side, let's go ahead and create a line from this dot to this one. All right, so once you've drawn the line, let's go ahead and return this piece of paper to his partner there. And so if yours looks like this, then good job. Now let's move on to the third set. So for the third set, we're gonna go ahead and measure it at two inches. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed the pattern or not, but the first set was three inches, then we subtracted half an inch for the second set and another half an inch for the third set. So the first set was three inches, second set was two inches and a half, and the third set is two inches. So let's go ahead and measure this one right here that's from the third set at two inches. So we wanna measure it from here to the two inch line so from here to the two inch line. So you wanna make sure to mark, mark it right there. Now we're gonna rotate it and do the same thing to the other side. But this time we're gonna set the tip at the two inch line 
and then we're gonna mark it at the beginning of the ruler right where the inches start. So from here to here, you're gonna draw a little dot and then you're gonna connect both of the dots creating a line from there to there. All right, so once you've drawn your line, let's go ahead and do the same thing to its buddy from the third set. So we're gonna measure this one just identical to the other one. So we're gonna measure it at two inches. So set the tip at the left side of the ruler right at the beginning of the inches right there and draw your dot right there where it says two inches. Then we're gonna rotate the piece of paper, set the, the tip at the two inch line and then mark a little line right here at the beginning of the inches. And same thing, we're gonna connect these two dots, creating a line. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so once you've drawn your line, let's go ahead and return this piece of paper to its buddy. And so if you've drawn the line on all of them, then good job, and let's move on to the next step. So let's put away the, the ruler and the pen, and let's grab the scissors. Now what we're gonna be doing is cutting along the line that we just drew on all these pieces of paper. So let's go ahead and start with the first set. And remember guys, just be very careful, you know what I mean? You could easily get hurt with scissors, so make sure to not stick your finger in between the blades because it will cut you. So now let's go ahead and throw this piece of paper off to the side and keep the bottom section. And let's repeat the same step to the rest of them. Now I want you guys to grab the white one from the first set and then you're going to grab your ruler and a pen. All right, so now what you want to do is measure from this bottom section right here to this section right there to the middle. And we're just going to measure, measure about half an inch from the tip. So place your ruler just like you see me place it. So make sure your tip is right there. Then right at the half inch line, draw a little dot and make sure that it's centered. All right, so I'm gonna mark it a little better, just like that. So that's what yours should look like. All right, guys, so once you've done that, so what you wanna do is repeat the same steps that we did here to the rest of the, sh of the pieces of paper. So let's go ahead and repeat the same steps to this one and all these. Alright guys, so once you're done with the last one and yours looks like this, then you're doing an excellent job. Now let's move on back to the first set. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to draw a line from this section right here to the dot that we just drew. And it's going to be a curved line. So let me go ahead and show you guys what yours is going to be looking like. So draw a line from there to there. And I want you guys to do the same thing that we did here to the left side. So the same line from here to here. And you want to make sure that it's curved as well because this is what, what shapes your pedals. So make sure to give it a nice little curve. You know what I mean? You don't want the line being straight. I mean, you could make it straight, but it's not going to look as good. You know what I mean? And so once you've drawn that and yours looks like this, then let's move on to the next step and repeat the same steps we did here to the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this video. All right, so once you've done that to all of them and they look like this, that means you're doing an excellent job. Now, I want you guys to grab your scissors and grab one of the pieces of paper from the first set. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you got one of those, you want to cut along the lines that we just drew on. But you want to make sure to cut very carefully along the line. You don't want to you don't want to cut outside the line. You could possibly mess up your flower. And remember guys, scissors are super dangerous. Make sure that your fingers are in between the blades because if they are, then you could possibly get cut. So avoid that. Take your time and cut these very carefully.
All right. So once you've done that, guys, this is what yours should look like. So if yours looks like this, then let's go ahead and repeat the same steps to the rest of them. Now let's go ahead and throw these aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video since we're going to be repeating the same steps that I just did. And once you're done cutting them, let's go ahead and open them all up. And you want to make sure to take your time and open them up very slowly and carefully. Sometimes some of the petals are cut too close together and they fall off. They, they actually, you know, they just like cut themselves off. And so it, it happens, if that happens to you and you lose a petal, do not worry about it. Just set it aside and continue on. Your flower will look great even though if you're missing a petal. So once you've done that, you're gonna notice that most of them are folded upwards, just like this one. So let me show you what the petals should look like. So you see how this one is folded upwards? Let me go ahead and get it closer to the camera. So you see how this is folded upwards, just like that? I want you to make sure that all your petals are folded identical to this one. So if they're not, go ahead and fold, fold them upwards. So this one's not, so I'm gonna go ahead and folded upwards so that they're identical to the one that I just showed you. All right, so take your time, make sure to fold them all nicely so they all have a valley fold. Valley fold is when both of the edges are facing upwards. If the edges are facing down, that's a mountain fold because a mountain is usually shaped as an upside down V. So you wanna make sure that this is valley fold, not a mountain fold. So once all your petals have a valley fold on them and they're facing upwards just like this, then you're doing a great job. And what I want you guys to do next is repeat the same steps you did here to the rest of them. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the video since we're gonna be repeating the same steps over and over again. All right guys, so once you've done that to all of them and yours looks like this, then that means you're doing an excellent job. Now, I want you guys to grab the smallest set right here, the third one, and since I want the yellow to be the primary color of my flower, what we're gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be showing you guys a little thing that you gotta do. So, since we're gonna be putting the button on the top of the flower, not on the white one, but on the yellow, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to flip the piece of paper over. So if this is the top section of the yellow, I want you guys to flip it over to the bottom, and then set the set the button right in the center of it and then draw a line around your button and so the reason we're doing this is if you don't do it then the flower is just going to not look as natural it's not going to look like a real flower it's going to look a little weird and so it's just it's just not going to look as nice so mark a circle around your button and then draw a line from the end of the petals to the edge of your button, just like that. Once you've done that, set your pen aside and grab your scissors. And now I want you guys to cut these little sections right here. So let me go ahead and show you. You're gonna cut that little tiny line and stop right at the circle that we just drew. And like I said, the reason we're doing this is so that your flower looks more natural, looks like a real flower. If, if your button fits in the middle and you have a big circle around your button and, and, and it doesn't look like the petals are coming out of your button, then it, they just don't look as real. All right, so once you've done that, guys, what I want you guys to do is go ahead and flip your piece of paper over, and you're gonna need the button because we're gonna be sticking it on the center section of the flower. So let's go ahead and grab some tape, and I don't have double-sided tape, I just have regular tape, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and with the sticky side facing down, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this top section and bring it forward, grab the bottom section, bring it forward, and stick those two sides together so that both sides of the tape are sticky. Then I'm gonna place the tape right under, underneath the button so that it sticks to the flower. Once you've done that, go ahead and place the button in the center of your top flower, 
just like that. Press it down nicely so it doesn't come off. And once you've done that, what I want you guys to do next, I'm gonna set it on top of my hand just like that and poke it downwards. So I created a circle with my left hand and then I pushed it down. So create a circle, push it down, and then bring the pedals together. And that way the pedals are kind of facing upwards. They're kind of creased upwards and it'll look really nice when we put them all together. So let's go ahead and set those aside. Then I want you guys to grab your tape and grab the first set of flowers that we started off with. And what we're gonna be doing, since the yellow is gonna be going to, on the top section because that's our primary color, then we're gonna be applying the tape to the white one. So grab a, about an inch worth of tape and do the same thing that we did before. You wanna make sure to roll it up so that both sides are sticky. Once you've done that, place the tape in the middle of your flower. And now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this petal right here, the white one, fits right in between these two yellow petals. So this petal has to fit in between these two, right down the middle. So make sure to center your flower, make sure it's nicely centered with the bottom one, and that your white petal is right in between both of the yellow ones, just like that. So if yours looks like this, then that means you're doing an excellent job. So just make sure that the white petal is right in between both of the yellow ones. So once you've done that, let's repeat the same steps that we did to this one to the second set. So like I said, since the yellow one is going on top, we're gonna to be applying the tape to the white one. So grab your tape, roll it up so both sides are sticky. Then once you've done that, place your tape in the middle center section of the flower. And now we're gonna set this petal in between two of the yellow petals. So make sure to stick your flower right in the center, but making sure that the yellow petals are off to the side of the white one, just like that. So once you've done that, let's repeat the same steps to our last set. So let's grab these two. Since the yellow one is going on top of the white one, we're gonna be applying the tape to the white one. So let's go ahead, grab your tape, roll it up so both sides are sticky. Once you've done that, make sure to place your tape in the center of the, fl of the flower. And then same thing, set that white petal in between two of the yellow ones. All right, so once you've done that, make sure to press it down nicely, make sure that it, it's, it's stuck on there really good. And now we're gonna set that aside. And what I want you guys to do next is we're gonna be putting these three sets together. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of tape, roll it up so both sides are sticky, and then stick it on our biggest set of flowers, right in the center. And we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did last time, but this time we want the yellow petal right here to fit right in between the white petals in the bottom section of the second set. So once you got them nicely aligned, go ahead and tape it down. And now we're gonna repeat the same steps that we did to the, to, to the first and second step, but to the third one. So grab tape, roll it up so both sides are sticky, stick it in the center of the second set, and then you wanna make sure that your yellow petal fits in between two of the white ones on the bottom section of these flowers. So get them nicely aligned, and then make sure to press down on it nicely so your flower doesn't come apart. All right, guys, so that was the final step. So we are done. So let me go ahead and show you guys what yours, your flower should look like. So if it looks like this, then that means you did a great job, yo. So congratulations on completing the paper flower tutorial. And guys, you wanna know something funny? This paper flower was actually the first tutorial that I ever posted on this channel. So if you go back to my oldest post, you'll see this, exa this exact same tutorial, but just not done as good. The quality of my video recording wasn't as great, and uh, my video editing wasn't as great either, but uh, I've come a long way, and I, I know a lot of people really like this paper flower tutorial, so I thought I'd go ahead and remake it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and it lets me know that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and not only that do not forget to subscribe that way it notifies you as soon as I release a new tutorial which I'll be dropping a lot of new tutorials here coming up soon so don't miss out subscribe now and I'll see you on the next one
And if you would like to watch some more of my tutorials, just click any of the following images here on the screen and it'll forward you to the tutorial. Alright my ninjas, you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.